I have 25 minutes to talk with you about uh, uh, something I discovered three years ago at the beginning of uh, the story, beginning of uh, the journey. It's uh, the, uh, um, well, the open badges. Uh, I just wanted to, to know uh, in that room, how many of you have already received badges, an open badges? Wow. Okay. How many of you have already issued a badge to somebody else? How many of you are aware of how the open badges work? Okay. So we will, we will come back on a, a different uh, technical point of view. My presentation is uh, in three points, three main points. We will talk about the badges, how we manage badges inside uh, Mahara, because we're talking about Mahara today. And uh, I will use a case study, a uh, case study from Switzerland, about how we can uh, use open badges to improve learning, the learning experience uh, in using e, uh, e portfolio. So first of all, a quick, uh, quick uh, return on op open badges, what open badges are. So I, I make three crimes. First, uh, we've always been using badges for a long time. For example, the medieval blazon, uh, the people on the battlefield. Uh, the army flag, same kind of thing, in fact. And the tartan, maybe it could, could be a blazon. Uh, you, you wear the color of your family. Uh, the badges, second claim, the badges are polymorphic. We can use badges for many, many different uh, uh, things, many different uh, um, uh, context. This is very interesting. And badges can be serious. Yes, indeed. It's not just a game, we just give badges for the fun. Badges can be very serious and can be something that assess really uh, the, the skill of your students or the, of, of people in general. Badges, for example, something that uh, gives your identity in a in a room or in an institution, and sometimes they open doors as well. You have badges that show the, the, the right you have uh, in the street, uh, law enforcement, and sometimes you can just wear badges for fun, to tell people in, what, in which mood you are. That's my mood today. It was the same mood yesterday, in fact. I'm so happy to be here with you uh, in New Zealand. And uh, this is really a country with Australia, two countries I love the best. So uh, I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, badges, we know badges maybe because uh, you, you wear a scout. So the scout wear badges all over their uniform. The more badges you have, the, the more skills you have. Girls also have badges, I found that uh, for the UK. It's very interesting because uh, uh, Junior Girl Scout badges, you have uh, architecture, aerospace, earth connection, eco action, dance, collecting hobbies. Uh, further down, there was something with uh, ironing and sewing. Well, okay, these are badges. Um, with the uh, apparition of the augmented self, all the hardware we are wearing to know much. Uh, Fee, uh, or how much uh, steps we have made during the day, or how much uh, stairs we have climbed during the day. Uh, we receive badges as an award, and these are my badges uh, from the, the little device uh, I lost uh, a few weeks ago. Maybe it was a, a predisposition not to walk uh, too much during uh, these two weeks of uh, uh, Easter holiday. But these are the badges I got walking and climbing. And for example, here I got a badge because I've climbed uh, many steps uh, representing 7,800 meters to the Nava Devi. So I can climb the Nava Devi. Wow, my God. But not in one day. <laughs> uh, in Foursquare, if you were using Foursquare to tell the people where you are, I'm not doing that to tell the people where I am. I do that to remember where I was. So uh, I'm using Foursquare. And Foursquare is sending you badges as long as you are visiting bars, <coughs> restaurants, cultural places. And uh, the more you do, the, the, the more badges you receive or the more um, 
level badges you receive. And for example, here I have a Jet Setter level 3 badges. It was in 2013 when I'm, I was leaving Sydney. Wow, 10 different airports. Cool. So what they are about for me, just, uh, just information, just, just fun. It's not really something we can use uh, in education or in vocational training. But I found this uh, Tony Lamontagne definition of open badges very interesting. For, for him, the open badges, it's a portfolio for, of assessment and certification on the long haul, the, the long life learning and wide life learning as well. And um, they encompasses uh, leisure activities, informal and formal activities, and also charitable activities. So everything you do in life, they can be award or they can be shown by a badge you can wear on your blog or somewhere on your portfolio. The badges technically is just an image uh, that can be uh, sent by uh, Moodle, for example, a Moodle for the learning pathway, the skill assessment, Moodle LMS, a learning management system, and can be shown in a Mahara, for example, where you will have uh, uh, the badge displayers and a place you reflect on your learning and uh, you can show the, the, the skill you acquire during your training. So in the middle, <coughs> we, have, we need a badge storage, a place we store the badges. And from that place, we can put them uh, into a Mahara. And uh, this is the backpack, the Mozilla backpack. But we'll see there's another way of uh, storing badges in a few minutes. So a badge is what? A badge is an image, a PNG file with a metadata. The badge name, description, issuers, something like this. It's not very sexy, in fact. So we have software that will design all the technical bits for you. You just have to design the badge graphically. So a children in age of six can do that. Is there somebody in the uh, age of six here? No? OK. So we can't try. Uh, a badge is a trust relationship between someone who will say, OK, I will validate your skill regarding the criteria or the quality uh, criteria. The, uh, uh, here I, I found the New Zealand Qualification Authority. Try to be local. And I, I can validate that because you're showing me evidences of your, of your learning, of your skill. And that I can also represent that validation by this, just a badge. This is interesting because all of this, we can say that a badge is a hub. A hub <coughs> that connects people sharing the same badge, uh, the same pathway, the same place they have been, for example, here, today and tomorrow, or yesterday. There, it's also, uh, so it's a social network huh, for me. It's also a way of uh, linking the criteria, skills, value, of uh, um, learn during, uh, during the learning, during the training. And for me, this is the semantic network. The semantic network, network is a place there are uh, many information and we can try to extract the information to make them, to give them sense, to make them sense. So it will be interesting to link the semantic network with the social network. And that, it can be done by anyone. Anyone can produce a badge, issue a badge. This is something very democratic. So is portfolio against the open badge or the open badge against the portfolio? We'll see what we can say about that. <coughs> e-portfolio is something very adopted in different countries in Europe, uh, first in UK, uh, mainly in UK, because of the Scots who have decided to put uh, to, to uh, 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 oblige the uh, nurses, the teachers, the uh, 
uh, the medical doctor to provide a PDP CDP and support the CDP by maybe a portfolio. The portfolio is something very well developed and uh, very well in use in UK and by uh, the fact that UK, uh, the Scotland is on top of UK, everything from the top come to the bottom, portfolio just uh, reached uh, England as well and Wales as well. But not everyone is supporting portfolio. For example, here we have, uh, we have uh, a demand by Jamie Harding to stop using portfolio in a university in the US because, because, because the portfolio creates another task for students to worry about, a task that accomplish nothing. Nowhere in there I do see a gap that must be filled within a portfolio. And the portfolio is a complete waste of time and effort. This person, I as understand nothing about what is a portfolio, if that person is saying that. Of course, it's a, lack of, uh, uh, it's a waste of time if there's no purpose of ma making and developing a portfolio. Uh, just making a portfolio for making a portfolio makes no sense. But making a portfolio in a, uh, targeting a, a, a usage for uh, the student future, that is uh, very important. Give sense to what we are doing. Also, we have uh, different uh, personal literature that speak about, uh, who speak about the perception of the student and the teachers in using portfolio or not using portfolio. And uh, the literature review on that is quite uh, balanced between the pe person being, uh, the people being against and the people going for using portfolio in school. Even me, I, I try to balance a bit uh, the, the usage of portfolio in a, a paper. If you want to hear about the paper, come to EPIC this year in Barcelona. You're very welcome. It was an uh, advertisement. Uh, <clears throat> so we can maybe rethink the portfolio. This is the portfolio model, as you know. Maybe we can rethink that in saying, okay, I did a little, uh, I did many things during uh, my, my training or during my, my life, and I can show what I've done with the little pieces, and I can represent these pieces by the uh, a range of badges. Why not? So we can think about reth rethinking the position of the portfolio within the badge, um, uh, within the open badges uh, uh, world. So how does it work, uh, the badge? I will just go quickly uh, on this. You can be in Moodle, for example, and in Moodle you have everything to create badges, manage, managing badges, okay? So that is a way of uh, <coughs> doing, uh, getting a badge. Having an assignment uh, in Moodle, taking a page from uh, your uh, portfolio, and then <coughs> issuing the badge, and the badge is displayed on, uh, on Mahara. Or you can use other products such as Open Badge Factory that will <coughs> override uh, the, the Moodle uh, badges and create a new way of uh, doing easily badges from Moodle or from Mahara directly without leaving the software. You can use also Open Batch Passport, which has been launched this night. So you can go uh, on the website, openbatchpassport.com. It's free and it's a new way of having a backpack. It's a better backpack because we can have different email address linked to your um, badges, which is not the fact with uh, Open uh, Mozilla backpack. So we can use open badges to share the information uh, with uh, Mahara to import the badges, but more of that, you can create pages on open badges to create the semantic network we, we discussed before and also the social network we also discussed the, uh, before uh, on the previous slide. So interesting product. I invite you to uh, subscribe uh, to the Open Badge Passport to see how it works. <coughs> I will go a bit quicker uh, on that. You have uh, 
time to have a look at the feature. We can discuss the feature together as a lunch break or coffee break uh, tomorrow. What I want to speak with you uh, during uh, the few minutes I have is how this technology can improve uh, the learning experience with the portfolio. The case study I, uh, I propose uh, to discuss uh, today is a portfolio, uh, it's a case study in Switzerland, a uh, school of, uh, uh, of uh, nurses, it's an MA program, a master program, um, and they, they, they were using Moodle Mahara and uh, PLE, personal learning environment. So when they asked me, uh, when they, they came to, uh, to decide to use Mahara, because they saw that video, uh, I've not the time to show the video now and today, but you have the address and I can always show the video at any point uh, today or, or tomorrow. It's a video we made with the University of Geneva and Zurich on ePortfolio to explain what is an ePortfolio to students and to teachers. Because when you ask the, the, the student about what is an ePortfolio, say what? E what? I don't know. So we wanted to um, give them a, a, a way of understanding what uh, ePortfolio are. And the university, uh, the high education institution, saw that video and said, okay, we're interested in having Mahara. So <clears throat> we work with them on uh, implementing Mahara and embedding Mahara in the curriculum. For example, they, they had um, uh, an instruction given to the student. They wanted at the end of year three, at the end of the training, the student have to provide a portfolio that will be assessed, and it will count for 30 person in final marks. It's not nothing. You can fail your third year in failing the portfolio. So it's not nothing. So my question I had, uh, I asked them, well, what is reflexivity? Because it was all based on reflexivity. You have to have a reflexive portfolio. What is reflexivity for you? They were. Uh, there were many in the room, there were uh, seven in the room or six in the room. We had seven definition, different definitions. So they were not in tune with what is reflection. Uh, my question was, do you train the student in a reflective way? Or you just think they are coming to your university with a reflecting uh, habits and uh, competences? Well, you train students to improve digital literacy because you want them to use videos, sounds, and uh, Google thing, documents somewhere, cloud. And uh, when you say cloud, uh, <coughs> do your student look through the window? Well, they know what you're talking about. And they have uh, 16 skills to assess in, the, in that school. So do you agree with what is in that skill? So seven people at interpretation. So what we decided is we create a badge on reflective practice to calm down the, uh, the, the, the mood we, we had in room. At the end, we said, no, not one badge, but three badges, three levels of uh, reflection practice. So the process, we, uh, we made a process in three, uh, three moments. First moment, the reflection, the badge. And we ask the, the people, the, the, the teachers, what is uh, uh, having a reflection, uh, reflective practice? For who will be the badge, hold the badge? And we use a framework made by the GISC uh, in UK. Uh, the framework your colleague were yes, uh, here yesterday, use it for a while <coughs> during the afternoon. So the results, we have uh, intellectual results. So we have the reification, so the appropriation of uh, the concept, an agreement about a boundary object, what is reflecting, uh, what is the reflection or the reflection process, and practically we know exactly the competencies uh, we want to get and how we can assess them, and technically we know the different documents we have to create and the different uh, activities and tasks we will ask the students to do. In the second uh, part of the process, the design, we uh, found and use this website, learningdesigner.org, 
also something from the Open University in England. Rural Britannia. Uh, and this software on the web uh, lets you create um, curriculum or lesson using the Bloom taxonomy. And you directly see here how much you are uh, in a participant uh, um, teaching or learning, uh, or much the students are learning by themselves, or they're working in group, directly in color. So this has given us uh, that document at the end, so you can print document on Word or PDF format, and you know exactly what you will do uh, to let the student get the different uh, uh, skills uh, and competencies uh, you need to gain the skill at the end. And after we implemented it, so we knew exactly what we needed to provide to the students in terms of pages and group pages and group to work together. So we knew what we, want to do with, uh, we wanted to do with the student. We provided template. Of course, template is not, uh, as we see, uh, as we saw uh, ju just before, it's not the answer to everything. But the student needed the template in, uh, in that school to be reassured about what they have to do, what they have to do. So we created template and we also uh, decided what kind of tools the student will use uh, for achieving and engaging with the different activities. So in conclusion, the introduction of open badges were uh, the introduction was something very interesting to improve the situation I've met when I arrived in that school. The teacher didn't agree the definition of skills and quality standard, so we discussed about that. It was very clear at the end. Clarification of the objective, so reification, binary object, bloom taxonomy. And at the end, so uh, we gave uh, uh, the mentor the time to be comfortable with the technology and hence learning situation in which they wanted to go because thinking to uh, because asking the student being performant in first year is just uh, something you can ask the student. We broke uh, the different uh, competences in the three years and uh, we, um, we decided to ask them less at the year one and come a little uh, step by step to something a more uh, higher stake of thinking at the end of the training and not from the beginning. So that's it because it's uh, Easter time. That's all, folks. <laughs> so we have uh, two or three minutes. Five minutes for questions. Two minutes, according to my clock. This is a Swiss clock. That's a Swiss clock. It doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, lady first. Sorry. <laughs> um, these badges that the students um, gathered during this process, were they encouraged to actually share these with um, the public or were they encouraged just to keep them for themselves, just as a check on what they achieved? On that project, on that project. On that project they, they keep it, uh, we are at the beginning of the project, yeah. they, keep it, they, keep, uh, they keep them for themselves, mm -hmm. they can share them on the, uh, on the um, on Mahara page. Uh, what we intend to do for the, the future is to gamify uh, the, uh, the, the training with cre uh, in creating different level of uh, knowledge acquisition. And we will try to foster the, maybe the lazier students to be challenged by the other students having uh, badge level two, three, four, five, ten. Say, whoops, maybe I'm big pa back behind and I have to run a bit faster. We'll see, that is a challenge. He works in another school where, where I'm teacher and uh, that works quite, quite well. They are challenged, but they are younger. So we can stay, uh, we, we can play with them. So one of the um, issues at Solon when I was there and open badges was some academics who wanted to create their own badges for little things and to say to their students, well, OK, we're going to issue these badges, but please don't put them on your LinkedIn or in the public because these are just for you. But sometimes... No, put them everywhere. Put them everywhere. The, the, the badge, when you have issued the badge, it just belongs to the person you have issued to. 
So you can't say, I give it to you, but don't show it. Exactly, yeah. So it's, it's up to the students to sort of understand that you know, they have to select the mm -hmm. best badges that show them off, not show everything, because it could be diluted in a way. But so also proof of intelligence of selecting the badges you want to show to some or other person. Yes? Um, it's a big fan of personalised learning and so looking at the um, sort of that schematic web that you had up there and so I like to follow my interests all over the, the internet and go, oh that's interesting to learn about that, learn a set of skills. The issue that I have or the problem that I have is not being able to follow the badges where they exist. So is there a way of um, looking at the, the metadata behind badges and having them in some common place so that you can actually follow your chosen learning paths? There's, uh, it's interesting because we discussed about that yesterday evening and I slept so I had no time uh, to, to look at, at, uh, at the website. The Mozilla website, there's somewhere a project uh, where they relate uh, the badge all together uh, regarding a profession or regarding a, a, a skill. Or, and you, you know all the, 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 the competencies you should have to apply for a job like that. So you know the, the path. And you can get the badges in the way you want. Or some, some badges are higher cal, so you have to get the badges uh, on the lower level before getting uh, uh, them the other on a higher level. So it could be anywhere, a any institution anywhere in the world. Because that's my ideal. I don't want to have to place my education around one institution and one program. I'd, I'd like, ideally, to be able to pick and choose the best. Mm -hmm. But you, you can uh, have a look at the Open Badge Passport and just wait a few months to see how the, the, um, the wave will, 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 will run over the Open Badge uh, um, uh, ecology. Because that uh, Open Badge Passport is just a place you can put the badges, but it's open. It's open with APA, so uh, application uh, pro uh, interface programming. And we will see other programs arriving on, on the market, on the web. They will be able to look into the Open Badges uh, passport and find information. So you can relate things that uh, your institution are interested in. And you can create a virtual boundary around the badges you are interested to keep. Uh, about your students or about uh, people you know. So everything is doable and everything is what we want to do with them, with the badges. So it's the power is in our hands and the sky is the limit. But we have to think out of the box. I think colloquial, I'm, uh, I said enough. Okay, other question, last question? So I'm happy to talk with you about badges uh, during uh, the end of I the afternoon and tomorrow. I have a question. First yes. of all, thank you. And the next question, where's my badge? Your badge? Ask <laughs> oh, Christina. Oh, oh. <laughs> Christina, do we have a badge? <laughs> do we have a badge for the, the session this year? For me, yes, okay. Um, but speaking of badges, yes, um, every participant will get a badge. So if you, especially those over there, if you haven't had a badge yet, at the end of the GUI, you will definitely have your first badge and you can put it into your backpack, either the Mozilla one or you can start to spray away with the Open Badge Passport. The nice thing about the passport is that you can have multiple email addresses. Uh, so you can connect your badges that you earn professionally and your badges that you earn um, privately and put them all together. And um, so we actually have three badges. One badge for participants, like you who attend the conference, for acknowledging that you have been here, which was in the past the attendee certificate, which you talked to your boss and said, yes, I've been there, I got the same. Um, then we also have a badge for all the presenters. 
And we also have a badge for the organizers. So because wow. that is a very different skill than uh, presenting. And so some people will have two badges, others will have one badge, and a few will have three badges. And next year, if you come back to Mama Hui, you will earn another. <laughs> yeah. If you, you go on an open badge passport and you create an account, you will have here apply for a badge. And if you do that, you will get that. You can get your first badge being an open badge passport member. <laughs> Thank you.